Hey guys, we have another charge controller. Uh, I don't know if I said anything about this, but the charge controller in the solar shed just died. So I replaced it with this Grow Watt. This is, I, I didn't even know they made standalone charge controllers, but that's what this is. It's not the um, hybrid unit or anything like that. It's called a Grow Watt, I think SC4880 meaning 48 volts uh, 80 amps this particular model is the higher voltage model they have like a 150 volt model and then they have a 250 volt model that's the PV this is the 250 so far so good it features um, CAN bus and RS45 and uh, you can hook it up to batteries that have that communication port and it can communicate with the batteries. It can communicate with the uh, inverters. Pretty neat unit. You can also hook in the Grow Watts little Wi-Fi stick and uh, access it via app or website or something like that. I haven't tried that yet. I might uh, put that on. But uh, so far, it's doing its thing. I will say uh, <clears throat> the menu is a. Uh, you got to look through the manual. And understand the menu uh, but after you kind of look over it a couple of times it uh, it's pretty straightforward I will say uh, if you're setting it up for a lithium battery whenever I got it set to user but if you if you change it to um, li which is for lithium battery that actually means you're gonna hook you're gonna you're gonna it's gonna expect you to hook up the CAN bus uh, to a battery that has that communication port so it won't actually work properly if you don't have that uh, <clears throat> there's also like um, one called let me see if I can cycle through user 2 which is supposed to be for lithium batteries without the communication port which is what I have, but uh, that one didn't seem to work proper. It, it actually charged, put some charge into my battery bank today, but it didn't fully charge it before it stopped charging. And then <laughs> it got up to like 52 volts and then my uh, mining rig here was pulling power out of the battery while we still had plenty of sun to uh, to power it so I didn't like that I don't want it draining my battery down in the sun in the, in the daytime when there's plenty of sun so um, today I just went in and changed it to the user uh, selection and uh, now it's working how I expect it so it's putting in 22 amps to my battery uh, about 1200 watts or so the uh, display on the controller is uh, showing 26 amps going uh, 1400 watts so there's a uh, about 1200 watts going to my battery and the other you know 200 or so is going to the mining rig that's what that means. So, when the con when the EP Ever controller died, I don't know why it died. It, I'm 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 heartbroken to be honest with you, uh, because I've used a lot of EP Ever and I've been very satisfied with their their controllers and they hadn't had any problems with them. But um, to be honest with you, I I used this. Most of, mostly use the smaller controllers like the 20 and 30, 40 amp controllers. And the one I had in here was this bigger 60 amp controller. And um, I used it before I put it in service. I did use it here and there just for testing, but it, it, it had no abuse or anything like that. And so when I finally put it into the solar shed, I mean, it's only been a couple months of, of use. 
and it died. You know, I just basically noticed that my miners weren't running and um, came in here and there was no, nothing on the display on the controller. My battery had gone into a fault situation because, you know, it, it never got charged. And uh, the miners were down. Uh, controller, like I said, just a blank screen, you know, no lights, nothing. Uh, I could hear like a relay going on and off when I disconnected the, the let's see, what was it? the battery connector um i actually took it apart i didn't see anything burned up or anything like that it just doesn't work i tried it on the bench connect the battery to it and it just doesn't work what killed it i don't know um i don't have any you know my panels aren't exceeding the 150 volt maximum that it has uh you know they're they're like 84 volts open circuit, so they're not even going to get anywhere close. One thing that I thought was, you know, in the manuals, it says to connect the battery first, and I always do that before you connect the solar. But um, there's always this the the opportunity that your battery is going to go into a fault um, scenario. And you know what that is. I mean, that's why you have BMS on these batteries is that if the voltage, cell level voltage goes down too low, the um, BMS is supposed to protect the battery and shut it off. So the thing that runs through my mind is if there is a problem where if you have no DC, you know, if you have no battery connected to the charge controller and it gets power from the solar panels and that's going to blow it out, that's a... <laughs> A huge design flaw because you're let's say you have a cloudy day your battery bank drains uh, BMS shuts it off to protect it the next day your charge controller has no battery connected really and the Sun starts shining on those panels does that kill these EP evers does that kill certain charge controllers because if it does it's just, it's just a huge massive design flaw in my opinion and if that is the case and, and and we are going to use these kind of controllers we're gonna have to come up with some kind of solution to where that doesn't happen you know like some some uh, like a real you know a contactor or something on the uh pv input that shuts the pv input off if there's no battery connected why can't they you know just put that in the controller itself so anyways I'm not saying that's what caused it or, or not I, I know that there were times where the battery bank did drain completely down and the BMS uh, shut off and everything came back the next morning perfectly fine that happened several times Did it just happened one one too many times I don't know but uh, I'm not gonna use if that's the case, I'm not going to use controllers that do that because it's inevitable that there's going to a fault is going to occur. You know, that's the whole reason why we have BMSs on batteries. Is so, anyways, uh, the square watts, uh, hoping it's going to work out. It came from Signature Solar, I can't find them anywhere else, so I don't know if these are just something exclusive to Signature Solar. You guys tell me if you know anything about this. But I, I'm kind of thinking that this is basically this, the MPPT controller circuitry that's in their hybrid inverters. Oh, hey, check this out. Let's do this. Whee! Looks pretty slick. There's a panel that covers this. I don't have it on there right now because I'm... Making sure it works. I don't want to have to put this on and this thing dies on me and I have to tear it all apart. The uh, terminals, you do have to put uh, ring terminals on your on your wires. It does not have um, anything to hold a bare wire. So you absolutely must put ring terminals on there. Which it did. 
Um, interestingly, <laughs> this thing uh, has a setting to where you can set the the charge current. You know, like it it actually comes default as 60 amp. Uh, it it's sold as an 80 amp. So you can you can change it to an 80 amp. You can change it the settings to 80 amps. It actually lets you go one step further to 90, but then it maxes out at 90. So I don't know. <laughs> Is that something they left in there that you could you could overdo it if you want, you know? And what happens? Does it just does it burn up if you do 90 amps? Or does it, or does it overheat and shut down? It'd be cool if it just overheated and shut it, shut down and not burnt up. But it's interesting that the company allows you to, to go to 90. So will it actually do 90? I don't know. I don't have enough panels up on the roof at the moment uh, to go 90 amps. But uh, I will. I will eventually. So that'd be interesting to, to test that. I do have to uh, change these. These are these are the old. Um, I don't know, eight gauge. It's too small. Um, I don't have enough panels right now to exceed uh, the current that these will handle. But I'm gonna put some big thick, you know, six or well, maybe I think I'm gonna go four. I think I've got some of this, which I think this is. I think this is four gauge. I got some four and I got some two. But whatever, I'm gonna put some big, thick cables, uh, battery cables on here that are, uh, you know, silicon covered, you know, high temp, thicker gauge. Uh, these, I'm not gonna trust these for higher <clears throat> amperage. But yeah, it's back in business, guys. Um, the uh, grow watt does have a fan in it. Um, so that might be a consideration if you want silence. Uh, it does have a fan and uh, it is currently running. So I don't know if this is something that you'd want to, in your living space or anything like that. So that's a consideration. Out here in the solar shed, it doesn't really matter. There's fans going on. I think that's about it. I'm, uh, I'll keep you guys posted on this and let you know how, how it does. Uh, oh, oh! One other thing is, I added um, one of these uh, DC power supplies, AC, because whenever, <laughs> whenever my charge controller went down, my my mining rig here was was down, and, uh, and I have to get it back up. And I was like, well, what's the best way? So I just grabbed this thing, and it can do like you know 50 volts or whatever. So it kept my mining rig going and then I was thinking this is actually pretty great because I can just leave it into the the circuit and if I have a day with no solar or my battery drains or whatever this thing will basically keep my mining rig running and the way that that works is like this technically is supposed to go a max at 48 volts it actually if you have it turned all the way up it goes to uh, like a little over 50 volts. It, you're seeing 53 right now because that's um, actually, this is pushing higher voltage in. So I'm hoping that this doesn't blow up because it's eventually going to get to 56 volts because when this charges the battery, that's where we'll be at, 56.4 or something. So I'm hoping that this thing can actually take 56.4 volts we're going to see these are super cheap, like $30, $40 from Amazon. It's a 480 watt uh, power supply. But anyways, uh, like I said, if, if, if I lose solar or I have a bad day of production, this thing will pick up the slack. And you might be saying, well, it's, it's in the circuit and it's running all the time. Yeah, that's true. However, it's not, nothing's drawing any power from it because it's set at a lower voltage than everything else, a slightly lower voltage than everything else. So as you can see here on the clamp meter, we can verify that, uh, you know, it's, it's like 70 millivolts <laughs> going out. Now, if, uh, if I kill the solar, we're gonna see this 
Um, well, actually, I'll have to kill the battery, too, because the battery is... Uh, yeah, let me do that. There we go. Now, as you see, there's 5.7 amps coming out of this guy. And nothing shut down. That was totally in, uh, uninter uninterrupted, right? So now I pull the <clears throat> battery back on. And uh, we stop drawing power from this guy. So this guy just kind of sets idle. And if anything, you know, if solar goes out, power from battery goes out, we'll be back in business uh, without any interruption from this guy. So uh, these are do have 480 watts. I'm going to end up being uh, using more than 480 watts when I get uh, more GPUs in here. So my idea is that I'll, I'll uh, just parallel up, you know, two of these. And uh, the other idea I have is that this little adjustment knob is not very fine. So I think I'm going to replace it with a multi-turn trimmer pot to where I can finally adjust it. And the reason why I want to do that mainly is because if I have two, I want them to share the load evenly. So when I get them wired up, I'm going to shut everything off and let it, let the load run off these guys. And then I can adjust the voltage on the little trimmer, the fine trimmer, multi-turn trimmer pots to where the load is completely equal uh, between the two, right? So I'll do a video uh, coming up. I'm gonna order another one of these guys and install a multi-turn trimmer. Anyways, that's, uh, that's where we're at with this and um, I'll catch you on the next video.